Hello and welcome back to Dukascopy TV. I'm Natalie MacDonald. Up next in the studio is Dukascopy TV regular Bruno Estier. Bruno, thank you very much for coming in today. Hello, Natalie. Now, last week you looked at the relative strength of the European market versus the S&P. I guess the same can be done to assess the strength of the Japanese Nikkei. Is the big rise resuming here? That's uh, right. We can use the same techniques uh, as we, we have it here. We have the Nikkei and we saw uh, from October to uh, April in the first quarter the rise, uh, the strong rise of the Nikkei. And what we have here is just the relative strength, the ratio of the Nikkei divided by the S&P 500. And of course, nobody wanted to have to, to be long uh, Japanese equity in the past years and uh, you see that uh, the ratio was coming down up to, to October, the beginning of Abenomics, if you wish, and, and then you had a, a big rise. And since May, basically, we are in a very small and narrow range. Uh, and we can, we can see that, uh, that in that narrow range, it suddenly starts to push up a little bit. How far on the Nikkei can we go? Are we aiming at new highs above 16,000, do you think? Well, I think we need today to take a different, uh, different approach uh, and, and make the difference between the very long term, where we could, and, and the very short term, which are going to be three, three months. Here we have a chart, a weekly chart, and of course after May we had the spike at uh, 16,000, and we see we already have a move up from the 12,000, and now it starts to, to bottom also a, a little bit. And what probably will happen is that we remain in, in that range bounded by 15,000 in the short term, and if we looked, uh, because of this momentum is, is showing up here, if we look at the daily charts, we could have some targets more in detail uh, moving up right now, but possibly during the month of September, which is a turbulent month uh, in other markets, especially in the US market, uh, we could have some pullback and an opportunity also to increase the position if not all the positions are, are done right now. So if Japan is rebounding, is Europe following? Well, it tries. Uh, last time we, we mentioned that uh, the same approach, relative strength for your stock divided by uh, the S&P 500, and it was moving down, except since July, where it's showing a rise, challenging what we call in technical analysis important lines, namely a descending trend line. And we'll see that it has stopped, uh, of course, since August, uh, because also the US market was correcting a little bit. And uh, if we take a closer look, uh, what we see on a daily chart is effectively since about uh, mid-August, there is this stalling out performance of European markets. So market is divided. It's trying to wait for the best entry and getting more confirmation from the market or uh, for maybe economic news. Uh, and we see that basically it's not really so fast as on the Nikkei, it's pulling down and probably could pull down to this red uh, carpet or red flag or red cloud, which is uh, the correct word, in the, coming, uh, in the coming two weeks, three weeks. So in your view then, when will be the best time to buy Europe? Well, the best time to buy Europe is, is when really we have uh, the oscillators, which is showing a loss of downside momentum, what we call the bullish divergence. For example, if we make a new low here compared to the one in end of August, we would like to see the momentum make a higher low and, and therefore preparing a spring bread for a big move up, a big push up. Looking at the US market just for a moment, that made a nice rise yesterday. Are we, are we not interested there? Well, probably a little bit less and, and for the reason that we showed because we saw that what is good and well outperforming is, is Japan and, and possibly Europe, right? And everybody has been long the US market for a very long time already. And it is possible that this rise that we have here in the last days of September and the first two weeks of September uh, is, is just compensating the decline we had from August 5th. And we do have technical signals or technical levels which are important. Namely, there is a gap at 1680, uh, which has not been closed. That means 
it's a, a place where there was a disruption between supply and demand. That means there was more supply than demand because the price immediately gapped down. And, and therefore, I have the impression that in the second half of September, we have the risk to, to break the lows that we had at 1625. So we will see. Bruno, as always, thanks very much for sharing your views You're with welcome. us. You're welcome. Bruno will be back in the studio with us next week, but don't go away. We've still got plenty more exclusive interviews and analysis for you. Goodbye for now.